There we go. Good morning and welcome to Breckland Planning for today. I just want to go through what we call our general housekeeping. I'm a bit raspy on my microphone this morning. Um, so first of all, fire exits. Um, there are two fire exits quite clearly marked on this wall here. There's another one at the end of the corridor where the lavatories are, and obviously the door where you entered the building. There are no tests um, down for today, so if we hear the alarm, we will treat it as a genuine um, alarm and exit the building, and we will congregate at a certain position in the car park while we wait for all the big firemen to come in and put the fire out. If you're not sure where to go, just follow this lock because they'll be running the fastest. Okay, um, next thing is procedure. Um, when an item is called, um, I have a list of people who have registered to speak. And if you'd like to come and sit on the uh, right hand side, uh, the officer will do the presentation. And uh, then I will tell you when you have your time to speak. And when your time is finished, you will hear the bell. I'd just like you to sum up and sum up is not the next 15 minutes, sum up is just try and get to the end of the sentence and so we can continue through the day. Um, I will also add that um, there, there is hand sanitizer and there are wipes. So if you if someone else has spoken for you and then you come to sit down, you're quite welcome to hand, hand sanitize and, and wipe the microphones if you wish. I'll leave that entirely up to you to do. So um, also could I ask you to um, switch your mobile, mobile phones and, and various devices to silent. Um, there is a procedure where if we go off, we fine you and we give the money to the chairman's charity, but we, we haven't done that for so long. So I might just get the money out of you and go down the pub. We, we'll see, we'll sort something out. Um, let me do an introduction to my team today. On my left-hand side, I have Mike Horn, who's solicitor to the council and Simon Wood at the far end, who is our Director of Planning and Building Control. My right-hand man, my right-hand lady, is uh, Rebecca Collins, who's Head of Development Management. Um, at the end, we have Hugh Coggles, who is our Tree and Countryside Officer. Um, the three rogues at the back is um, Fiona Hunter and Chris Hobson, who are Principal Planning Officers. And the, the rules between the two thorns is Nicola Ellis, who is our Senior Planning Officer. Uh, in front of me, so I don't forget her, of course, is Julie Britton of D Democratic Services, who will be taking the minutes uh, and, and putting me in my place when I need to be. And um, Julie's leaving about lunchtime, so we'll then be replaced by Teresa. Um, we also have our technical support officer um, and who's joined us today. Oh, he's not in the room, he's at the back, which is Chris Fitzgerald, he's our new chap. Uh, Becky Harris, of course, who is our usher for today and also a planning officer. And um, we did have Ruth, uh, Ruth Tudge, and she's Democratic Service, but she's not in the room either at the moment, but they may come in and out. Okay, that's fine. That's all my intro is done. So without further ado, we're going to start. Um, and our first item on the agenda, uh, item one are the minutes. I, I gather everyone's read them and I can sign them off. Good, thank you. And this is unusual. We get to sign something this time. There we go. Thank you. Super duper. That's like old times. And uh, number two um, on our agenda, apologies and substitutes. Do we have any, please, Julie? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I have one apology from Councillor Atterwill and, and Councillor Taylor Taylor is his substitute. OK, we have nothing from Councillor Bowes or Councillor Kyber. Oh, Councillor Kyber, you did sneak in. Sorry, didn't have you there. Well done. Um, Chairman, sorry, there was a diversion on the way. Yeah, that's a good. That's that's number one on the excuses. Diversion, like not not alarm clock didn't go off, or I had a rough night last night. Councillor Crane. Councillor Bowes was certainly on her way. Oh, she's on her way as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, terrific. Yeah, I spoke to her this morning. Good, good. We have almost a full compliment. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Taylor, for sitting in. Um, we've got hot water and towels at the ready. Considering you've only got two weeks to go before your impending birth of your child. And um, just to let you know and make you more comfortable about being here today is I'm an avid viewer of Call the Midwife. So you've, you've not to worry. I shall have gloves at the ready. So just, uh, you know, lay back and enjoy, enjoy the whole experience if it happens. Good. See, she's so settled now. <laughs> so settled. Good. Okay. 
Item three, declaration of interests and representations received. I will take them as each, each item is raised. Uh, item four, chairman's announcements. Um, it's rather strange for your calendar. We're here on a Tuesday, but that's what's going to happen. Um, so we're going to Tuesdays. It just became a, a, um, a matter of having that day of grace before, because we were finding at the weekend on first thing Monday morning, we were just completely flooded with various alterations to the agenda. So we, we've had to move and so we can close the book. So if you want to make sure that uh, your golf or knitting circle or whatever else you lot do on a on a Tuesday is moved back to the Monday or forward to the Wednesday, and then we'll we'll be all fine with that. It also um, there's uh, no virtual meetings anymore uh, due to planning uh, national government guidelines. So that's the end of um, any online um, features like that. I, I gather we'll still be doing chairman's panel. Yes. Oh, good. Chairman's panel will still be online. Um, our next thing, um, I have these things to do. I've done white down. That's fine. Um, 40 years is a long time for anyone in their life. When you get to our age, it's completely different. But 40 years for a young person. And yes, it's um, Chris Hobson's birthday. He is 40 today. Oh, 40 last week. No, don't clap. That was last week. I got that he was 40. That was last week and he never gave us an invite or anything. So forget that. Don't clap him. He's old now. He's, he's over 40. Good. No cake. He didn't bring cake. He didn't care less about us. So we're not going to we're not going to clap him. OK, item five, request to defer. None today. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, the train. Yeah, we're having it back on. We're not having it back on. No, we're not having it back on. I've lost the number. Sorry. Oh. Nine. Gender item nine. Sorry. Okay, um, we had a we had a tree preservation have, order. We did have a TPO uh, item number nine that isn't being heard at this committee. Hopefully, we'll have it in March. Okay, super. Thank you. Um, uh, do we have any items of urgent business? None today. Thank None you, today. Jim. That's fine. Um, a local plan update is item seven, and I'm going to hand over to Simon Wood, who will take us through that. Yeah, just a, just a very short update uh, today, Chairman. Um, we are looking at the call for sites process as part of the, the local plan update. Um, that will be in relation to sites for any land use, including residential, employment, leisure, etc and we're also looking at call for sites in relation to local green spaces as well we are taking a report to cabinet and subject to in march and subject to cabinet approval in march we will be starting that exercise around about april thank you chairman thank you nice and brief any questions for mr uh, simon wood while you're here no fine we can move swiftly on terrific um, item eight is deferred applications. Um, we haven't any at the moment to be raised today. We've got a nice list growing there, so we'll have to sort them out eventually. Item 10 um, is um, onto our main schedule. We've got TPO 2021, number 17 at Attleborough. And I'll hand over to Hugh to take us through the request. Yes. Oh, I do, yes. Sorry, well done. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Mr. and Mrs. Redfern, are you here? Oh, yes. Would you like to come and sit on the right hand side? I do apologize. I was I was flowing so well and then uh, and then all the wheels fell off then. Anywhere along there, wherever you feel comfortable. Terrific. Okay, over to you then, please, Hugh. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Um, so this is the objection to a TPO at the Nook Buckingham Road, Attleborough. Um, 
the order um, is, is there's two trees subject to the order. They're very close together and they actually look like one tree when you see them from a distance, um, but they are two separate stems. So th this is the site plan. Um, the trees are at the, the bottom of the garden, at the western end of the garden of the nook um, and on the southern boundary with the adjacent neighbours. So this is a picture of the tree. Uh, I would say it's a semi to early mature oak or the, they're two semi to early mature oak trees. Um, there is still some growth potential. The extent of the canopy is, I would say it's almost 50-50 in the owner's garden and the neighbor's garden that overhangs um, both gardens. The reason for the TPO was that the owner of the tree requested that um, the council would come and have a look at the tree after the, um, he understood that his neighbours wished to undertake pruning works to the tree under under the, their, their common law rights they could prune the tree right to their boundary which would be harmful to the health and the appearance of the tree and this was his concern um, after looking at the tree an assessment was made and it was um, decided that the tree was suitable for a TPO it achieved um, a high enough tempo score so this is photographs from the um, the, the objectives of the neighbours who will speak um, following me so I'll go through their photographs when they're speaking and that's that's about what I've got to say thank you thank you um Mr and Mrs Redfern you're speaking together or leaving it to the boss that's fine yeah, okay yeah you have three minutes then Mrs Redfern sorry I'm not I'm not used to this <laughs> Okay, so I'm Joanne Redfern, this is my husband Steve, and we live and own the property next to the nook where the trees for the possible TPOs are sited. Um, picture one of ours that we sent in shows our house and garden to the right of the arrow and the word boundary. You can see a very straight line that Mr Davy, the neighbour, cuts along the boundary line. He does not want any uh, anything protruding into his garden, which we appreciate and understand, but we would also like the same appreciation and understanding in return, as a large amount of his tree is in our garden, inflicting restrictions on how we can enjoy and use our garden, which is understandably causing us mental and emotional stress. In picture two, you can see a red line marking the boundary and two trees circled, which have never been maintained sorry i'm a bit nervous um looking at tree a it can be clearly seen that mr davy whilst owning the tree only has a small portion of it in his garden picture three shows two examples of the same species of tree and our four size comparison these trees are still growing and this is what happens when they're not maintained spreading across multiple gardens and rendering gardens unusable Picture four and picture 4A are projections of how big these trees will be if left using the existing tree from down the road, which is still growing, for size comparison. And you can clearly see that they will be engulfing and rendering useless the whole garden and stopping us from using it for our pleasure and emotional needs. It's already an absolute outrage that we have to pay out a thousand pounds to cut a tree that's not even ours and over 20 years, it will cost us £10,000 if it's cut every year or every other year, sorry. Also, in deciding about the TPOs, only the nook was visited. The effect on the neighbours was not considered. We and the board, other bordering properties should have been visited to see how it affects us and our usage. Our solicitor advised us that a TPO must either have amenity value, be exceptional to the species, or be of local benefit and none of these can be fulfilled. In fact, it can be classed as trespassing, you causing a nuisance and under common law interfering with a person's enjoyment, preventing light from reaching plants. Therefore, we oppose the TPOs. However, should they be granted, these trees need to be surveyed, thinned, dead wooded and regularly maintained at Mr. Davies' expense. They cannot just be left as the lean on one of them will eventually cause a problem, according to Mr. Neil Thomas, the tree surgeon that we had instructed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, it's open to questions from members, um, uh, questions for our tree and countryside officers or questions um, for Mr. and Mrs. Redfern. 
Anyone got a question at all? No. Oh, Councillor Diagon. Just turn that off. Councillor Diagon. Ah, oh, right. Sorry, it wasn't turning itself on for a second or two. Um, well, the question I've got is: you've got one one side who um, want work done on, even if it gets a TPO, you are then allowed, as far as I understand it, um, you know, a certain amount of work doing it. But if one side then says, "I'm not," what happens if the other side say, "Well, I'm not going to do that work"? Um, whatever you sort of side for the tree surely that's not going to do the tree any good or you won't be able the other side won't be able to actually cut their side down so um i'm just interested perhaps i don't know the um perhaps mr horn can ask this question where do you go from there because if one side isn't going to do anything about it and the other side has been affected by it um it, 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 I'm, I'm a bit confused <laughs> oh sorry um well the, the responsibility and the, uh, and the need to maintain the tree doesn't change with the TPO. So the overhanging branches are not really the responsibility of the tree owner. The tree owner has a legal duty of care to ensure his tree is not an unreasonable threat to any third parties. Um, he doesn't have a legal responsibility to prevent overhanging branches. So unless he was very generous, it, it would generally come down to the people who wanted to prune the trees, in which case the people here who are objecting could apply to trim back branches that are overhanging their garden. Um, providing that was in accordance with current good practice, then it would be approved. What wouldn't be approved would be cutting the branches right back to the boundary because that would be harmful to the tree and it wouldn't be in accordance with current best, best practice in the British standard. But what I was trying to get the point was this, they, you know, you might sort of say, right, here's the tree. These are the works which can be done on it to maintain the tree. Um, they, you know, the side who, um, you know, who don't own it might be quite willing to do th their side of the um, boundary. But if the other side then uh, don't decide to do anything, can they be enforced against or who, how, would, how would they be enforced against to do it? Because obviously if one side, because, you know, if you've got a tree like that, um, I presume when you. I think what Councillor Diagon is trying to say that is if he went to the barbers and had a haircut and then he shaved the left hand side of his head and not the other. Yeah. You know, uh, it looks stupid. And it might but actually um, Mr. Horn's going to answer yeah. that. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, one has a common law right to cut back. Uh, to the boundary, anything that overhangs one's own property. That is a common law right that Mr. and Mrs. Redfern have now and would still have if the TPO is confirmed, though that right would be subject to uh, the proper process of the TPO, i.e. to speak to the council and say, I propose to exercise my common law rights to cut the tree back. Are you happy with that, yes or no? Um, answer, yes. Then they have a common law right to just go and do it. Um, who would you like to add anything to, to that? As I think we spoke um, before, which I said, you know, I, I mean, I've got a step ladder and a, and a, yeah. and a black and decker. Could I do it? No. <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the TPO would enable us to ensure that the work is carried out by a competent person and in accordance with current best practice at the moment. Um, it doesn't prevent Mrs. And Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Redfern using a contractor that they wish to use, but at the moment they, they would be within their rights to undertake the works themselves. We'd have no control over the quality of the work or the standard of the work. Um, so the TPO would just enable us to ensure that the work is undertaken in a way that would not be harmful to the health or the appearance of the tree. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that we would, if the TPO is approved, we would allow the tree to be pruned right back to the boundary because that's the whole thing um, that we're trying to avoid at the moment. But there would obviously be some scope for some pruning work that would be allowed to, to be undertaken to the tree. Okay. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, Councillor Kybird. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, it does appear there's a large number of trees um, from the photographs being given. Um, 
do any other trees in the vicinity have a TBO? And what is the particular amenity value of this particular tree? Yes, that there are some other oak trees on the not on, not on the boundary with the garden here that have TPOs, but there's some some other trees in the vicinity. Certainly, I think the circled trees that you could see on the on the um, aerial photograph have TPOs. On also oh, one of them has a TPO on it, and I think they were probably served at the time when the houses were built, the newer houses. Um, the amenity value of the tree. I'm not going to pretend that this is one of the most prominent trees in Attleborough that has you know is visible to to hundreds of people, but it is visible from the houses at the end of the garden from the road there and we, we're quite um it's dip, because there's no legal definition of amenity value it's sort of based on an officer judgment so the tree doesn't you know there's no set rule for amenity value but generally we would say it has to be certainly visible from a public place which this tree is that it's not overly prominent but it is visible from a public place Thank you. Uh, any, uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, just one thing, Mr Chairman. Um, I, I wouldn't say that the, the tree concerned has got an uh, amenity value at all, actually. Um, it's on <clears throat> the end garden and the end property. Um, but uh, it's a contentious one, actually, because, I mean, I could see the point they want to cut it back or trim it back, but you've still got to have the balance of the tree. Um, but uh, go from there. Okay, thank you. No, uh, Councillor Kittler Morris. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> just a, a quick question to either um, Mr. Coggles or, or Mr. and Mrs. Redford. Just want to, want to know how much you consider the tree could be cut back um, if the TPO was, in, was, was, uh, was upheld. And, and whether Mr. and Mrs. Redfern would be happy with that. Have you talked to them about how much they could cut the tree back and how much, whether they would be satisfied with that cut or whether they are insisting that it goes to the red line that we saw in the photograph? Sorry, can you microphone on, please? Sorry. <laughs> we never intended or wanted to cut it back to the, to the boundary, that red line, because obviously, the tree would die if that happened because it would cut half of the tree off. So that was never the intention. The intention was to just trim it back. At the moment, the branches- oh, 20 foot into our garden. Actually measures 20 foot. And because uh, it hasn't been, we've been in the house six years and because it's never been touched, obviously it's grown about 12 foot since then. So if it had been maintained at that originally, it would have only been a bottle of six or seven foot into the garden and kept like that, it would have been fine. But we see that in the next few years, it's going to be even bigger. It will end up covering the whole of the garden at the back end. So how much would we like to take off, really, I suppose, is as much as we could do. How much? But, but not to the boundary. But not, not obviously to the boundary. Chris. Oh, sorry, Chris. Oh, Hugh. So, I mean, generally with, um, it, it is a relatively young oak tree and there's no reason why it can't be maintained as a small, you know, it doesn't have to get as big as the other trees that you've circled. If, if pruning works undertaken while well, the tree's relatively young, you can maintain it at a certain size. What you can't do is have a great big tree and then suddenly make it into a small tree because that, that does harm. So we, we, we normally, applications to works to trees, we normally approve uh, a reduction, so pruning overhangs by sort of two to three meters, something along those lines. If there was something actually wrong with the tree, so if, if there was a split or you know, or, or if the tree became unstable, then we'd allow further work to be under, undertaken to make the tree safe. Um, at the moment, I don't think there's well, there isn't any indication to suggest that the tree is unsafe in any way. So, I mean, I, it's difficult for me to actually come out there and have a proper look at where. Um, good pruning points would be, but I would say if you if you had it into your mind that we would probably allow around sort of two to three meters cut back from your side of the boundary, I don't think that would be too much. That wouldn't be too much of a problem at all. So then becomes our cost every two years to get the the tree maintained that doesn't belong to us. So we're thank you, um, Rebecca, please. Oh, 
okay. members, I'm just going to remind you here today, you know, you've got a report in front of you, which um, makes an assessment of the tree, including its amenity value to the area, which Hugh's already explained. That assessment of that tree scores a score of 17, which means it is a score that's high enough to serve a TPO order. Now, it's perfectly within your remit members from the information that you've had in front of you and the photos to say that that tree isn't worthy of a TPO, but that is not our professional judgment. And that is what we've put in front of you today. Now, as we always say to you, the serving of a TPO does not prevent works to the tree being undertaken. It's those works are done through an application process where Hugh or alternative tree officer, but Hugh in this instance would go out and make an assessment whether those works are appropriate. You are not here today to decide whether the pruning works are or aren't acceptable. What you're here today is, is the quality of that tree, its amenity value to the wider area, enough to serve a TPO. It is our professional opinion that it is. And obviously going forward, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Redfern, if they wanted to put an application and the TPO was served, if they wanted to put an application forward to prune the tree, they would put that application forward and then we would discuss with them what is appropriate pruning, taking into consideration whether or not works will be done to the other side of the tree, as Councillor Diagon has pointed out. So, but our ultimate aim will then be an assessment about keeping and retaining the long term health of that tree. So, members today, your assessment is not about how much that tree, tree can or cannot be pruned. It is is that tree worthy of a TPO? And that's what we're asking you to confirm today. Uh, Mr. Horn. Uh, can I just please add uh, that um, however sympathetic one might be to the fact that the Red Ferns find themselves in a position in which, because the tree owner is choosing not to cut back the tree, they therefore have to expend money. That is the case, um, unfortunately for them, whether or whether not the TPO is confirmed. That's just how it is. Um, and it is irrelevant to the TPO confirmation. Uh, slightly going off track, but Mr. Mr. Redfern, is there anything you wish to add before we go to a vote? <clears throat> no? Okay, you're fine? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, members, on uh, this item, which is TPO 2021 number 17 on our, on our agenda, item 10 in Attleborough, your um, officer's recommendation is that we confirm the order for a TPO. Could I have a show of hands for the confirmation, please? No one? Can I have your hands up, please? One, two, three, six, seven, eight, ten. Oh, sorry, it's Harry. He's, he's so far at the back. He's, he's, he's nearly in Yaxham. Sorry, Harry. Yep. Ten of those against. Are you against or you? Oh, you are against. 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 Yeah, ten to one. Okay. Um, this order for TPO has been confirmed. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Okay, we're going to move on to item two, eleven A at um, Beatley, three PL twenty twenty one one five two four. This is a full application. I have um, the Chairman of the Parish Council, Stephen Boyce, if you'd like to come up here, sir. Uh, Howard Cardus, who's the agent, and uh, Councillor Richard Duffield, who's the ward rep. Chairman. Chairman. Yes, Harry. Uh, I just realised I'm going to withdraw uh, from the room for this uh, application or not take part because I know some of the objectors or applicants i just realized thank you oh okay no okay you're okay to remain okay um over to you then please nicola sure um, so this is an application for the creation of two residential um, pitches for the station of caravans to provide accommodation for one traveller family. Um, so, yep, the site is located to the northeast of the village of Beatley and immediately adjacent to Ottersmead Holiday Park, which has the mission for 15 holiday pitches um, and is in cu currently in operation. The site lies approximately 130 metres um, from the village's settlement boundary um, and, lie, and lies along an unlit 
section of footpath that joins it to the rest of the village. The site currently has permission um, to be used as a garden centre, which is proposed to continue as part of this application alongside the residential use. One of the pitches um, that is proposed part, as part of this application is already occupied. Um, and so here is some photos of the site entrance um, as, it, as it is now. Um, this is part of the road frontage. Um, this is part of the proposed site for the, um, the pitch that isn't currently occupied. Um, these are photographs of the pitch that is occupied on the site already, along with the um, garden centre building, which is the, um, the clad building with the um, pitch with the caravan that occupies the site um, immediately behind it. And so part of the proposed plan, the um, pitch already occupied is behind the garden centre and um, with, with the other proposed pitch to the south. Um, the utility block blocks um, haven't yet been constructed um, and these would be close to the pitches and would comprise um, cloakroom utility area um, and a day room, um, each measuring um, 10 metres by 5 metres um, and they would be clad um, with, with a tiled roof. It is worth noting as part of this um, site, there has been a previous refusal of planning permission um, for a new dwelling um, at the time of this refusal, um, the um, gypsy and traveller status of the applicant wasn't brought forward as a material planning consideration, um, but officers are satisfied as part of this, uh, as part of this application that the information um, in respect of the status um, has been submitted, and therefore we can consider it against the relevant um, policies in place for gypsy and traveller sites. So in terms of the assessment, both the National Planning Policy Framework and the pol Planning Policy for Traveller Sites um, support the sufficient supply of homes for tra gypsy and traveller communities, um, with the latter also encouraging um, local authorities to consider sites which are mixed residential and business uses, which, is, which this application proposes. Um, the local policy HOU08 um, permits the provision of new sites, providing certain criteria met, including sustainability and highway safety. Officers have considered the proposal against um, this policy. And there is a view that the site is reasonably close to Beatley Village, giving access to local services and facilities, which also encourages community engagement. Um, in addition to this, um, alongside the Highway Authority, officers are of the view that the proposal would not lead to any unacceptable um, impact upon highway safety. It is noted that there is no footpath linking the site to the village, which would re result in some reliance upon private vehicle. And um, weight is also given to the fact that it's a brownfield site um, due to the existing use as a, as a garden centre. Um, in terms of the impact upon the character um, of the site, it is immediately located adjacent to an existing holiday park and would reflect the infrastructure that is currently on that site. The pictures are also set within the garden centre building so wouldn't be isolated um, and therefore overall it's considered that the it wouldn't appear isolated in the rural landscape um, and whilst there would be a degree of encroachment upon the countryside it's not considered on balance that this would be harmful to the rural character of the area. Um, officers have all cons also considered residential amenity and have concluded that there's sufficient distance um, between the site and neighbouring properties. Um, we have received objections from the Parish Council um, with regards to the site's location outside the settlement boundary and we've also received um, two letters of objection um, in respect of the, um, the fear of future development and um, retrospective nature of the application and the lack of benefits the site would bring to the village. Um, there have also been issues with regards to the use of the site um, currently in operation which could be dealt with um, outside of the re remit of this planning application. And we have also received an a, a letter in support of the application as well. So weighing up the application, it's accepted that the site lies outside of the settlement boundary with potential rely upon, reliance upon private vehicles to access local services. However, the site is within close proximity to the village and it would represent brownfield development and encourage a mixed use of the site, which is covered um, by planning, the planning policy for traveller sites. 
as such officers are of the view the proposal meets the aims of local and national policy and have recommended the approval of the application subject to the, um, the conditions detailed in the report. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Um, Phil, oh, Councillor Duffield, would you like to go first or last? Last, okay, thank you. Uh, we have um, the Chairman of uh, Beatley Parish Council, Stephen Boyce. Um, three minutes, please, sir. Steve Boyce, Chairman of Beatley Parish Council. The Council objects to this repurposing of a redundant garden centre or very often not opened garden centre with two large residential three bedroom units sited outside of the settlement boundary. We already have a gypsy traveller site within the parish, at least one, and we have very little amenity within the village, no shops to call on. You talk about the connection with the local village, but there is nothing in Beatley for them to connect with. There's a village hall and a hairdresser's. We object to this planning application. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I'm just got to clear my thing. Um, we've now got uh, Howard Carders, please, who's the agent. Uh, three minutes, please, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. I'm Howard Carders, speaking on behalf of the agent and applicants. Uh, thank you to Britain Council Planning Department, particularly the case officer Nicola Ellis for engaging with the agent, agent proactively throughout this application which is for a mixed-use scheme comprising two residential pitches for static caravans, each served by a utility building with cloakroom, utility area and day room. The garden centre building is retained with the proposed pitches reached by the existing access. First and foremost, it's important to note the applicants meet gypsy and traveller criteria as defined by the government's planning policy for traveller sites publication, whilst the national planning policy framework supports the supply of homes for gypsy and traveller communities and the planning policy for traveller sites encourages local planning authorities to support mixed use sites, provided the amenity of neighbouring residents is not adversely impacted. Policy HOU08 in your own local plan allows for the provision of new sites for gypsies and travellers, subject to the compliance with five criteria, which are set out in the report before you in paragraph 2.5. The site is well located to the settlement of Beatley, with good access to its services and facilities, as well as those on offer within the garden centre itself. This is a brownfield site which is promoted in national policy and located alongside the garden centre. Utilities are already available for the proposed pitches from the existing use, so this is a particularly efficient mixed-use scheme utilising brownfield land to its best effect. We note there are no objections from Norfolk County Council Highways on highway safety grounds, whilst the contaminated land officer also has no objections. And although the parish council has objected to the proposal site, as it is located out of the designated settlement boundary, it is just over 100 metres away from it. Being a brownfield site, what is proposed would not be new development in the countryside. Your planning department agrees that what is proposed is acceptable in terms of location. And on the balance of all matters considered, a recommendation of approval has been provided to you. It is important to note that there has also been a letter of support for the proposed development. To summarise, this proposed scheme complies with national and local planning policies, which are key material planning considerations in the determination of such an application. The application also complies with the planning policy for traveller sites criteria by providing an efficient mixed use site. The proposal constitutes use of brownfield land that would have no adverse impacts on the character of the area or the amenity of neighbouring uses. Just as importantly, this proposition before you today would provide much needed security for family, family with gypsy traveller status, which includes three children who require a stable environment, has been further identified in the applicant's own personal submission included in the application documents. As such, we would hope the committee will be minded to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we've got uh, Councillor Duffield, please, who's the ward rep. Three minutes, please, sir. Oh, sorry. 
has there been any financial statement proving that the the garden centre has ever been up and used because I've never seen any action whatsoever and surely that should be it's a not, main determination. It's, it's actually it. not relevant to the application before us. But I agree it's it's an it's an oddity because I, I actually drove past there the other week and saw short horns. I thought I didn't know that was a garden centre. Yeah. But uh, it's not relevant to the application, whether it's open or not open. Relevant to the application as much as it's a rural business, I would have said yes, that was. To oh. determine the necessity for having people living on site. But anyway, okay. Um, with regard to uh, the settlement boundary, you've had a case further down the road from that adjacent. When there's a road in between the settlement boundary, uh, that is not classed as adjacent to uh, the settlement boundary, which had application turned down. There's been several applications turned down here uh, and that went for appeal twice, I believe, and the appeal person turned, turned the application down. So I was quite amazed that the officer actually uh, recommended approval. Yes, I understand with the gypsy fraternity for not enough traveler sites and that, but there is a site, as you've already heard, uh, quite a large one within the area and there are in the rural areas a few more sites which are not to full capacity so with that in mind i would hope that the committee turn this application down uh, because it will have an impact on the the area visual and everything else thank you thank you um it's open to questions from members. Um, I've got Councillor Crane, Councillor Bowes, and then Councillor Wilkinson. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, are we determined... Have you got your mic on? Yes, I oh, can't hear you. Bring Sorry. it a bit closer. Um, I just really want to ask the question, are, are we determining this application um, under a gypsy and traveller occupancy, or are we determining it under... Um, yeah, I can see you're nodding at me, Rebecca. So I don't really need to waffle on anymore. But um, right, that's a very important point. You said Thank what you. I was thinking. Thank you very much. Uh, Rebecca, please. Yeah, thank you. I did want to butt in before, but uh, Nigel didn't let me. But yeah, just to be really clear, members, um, obviously Beatley is a how for village and it has a settlement boundary. And usually we only allow housing development outside the settlement boundary where it's immediately adjacent to the settlement boundary, which is what Councillor Duffield has said, which is completely true. Uh, the difference with this application members is what we're saying to you is they do meet the gypsy and traveller status from the information they provided and therefore you are determining it in accordance with policy how 08 of the local plan this is set out at paragraph 2.5 of your report there isn't a requirement in policy how 08 for the development to be immediately adjacent to the settlement boundary the requirement is to accord with those five um, criteria which is set out at paragraph 2.5 of your report. So your assessment needs to be, you know, um, is this a suitable site for residential development? Is it sustainable in terms of its accessibility to Beatley and other services? Um, is there safe access to the highway network? Is there ability to achieve neighbor, 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 neighborliness? Sorry, neighborliness. Um, and is it sensitive to the local character of the area? So it's those five criteria at 2.5 under how eight. So unfortunate, uh, well, it, it's not relevant that it's immediately adjacent to the settlement boundary or not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bowes, please. Thank you. Um, my question's been answered, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Crane did ask the same questions as myself, although, um, we in the local plan, Brecon local plan adopted in 2019, we did say that we didn't need any uh, traveler gypsy sites considered till about 27, 28. So I'm just wondering why this one now feels that it's got to be brought forward now. Um, are they the owners of the um? garden centre? Do they run it as a garden centre? Um, is this a backdoor um, 
application for uh, residential as they've been turned down for residential building on there. It's a bit of a mixed match, really. It doesn't seem, are they keeping the garden centre open? They want some accommodation or is it a backdoor way of getting accommodation in there because they've been turned down with buildings? I know it's, we're considering what's in front of us, but considering what we said in the local plan that we didn't need to decide till 20, I think around about 26, 27, 28. Well, um, my planning officer is multi-talented, but I'm not sure whether she heard any of those questions. No, I did, I did. Oh, you did? Oh, well done. So I told you she was multi-talented. Multi-talented, she's... Apologies, members. I just want to make sure that I'm quoting the exact from the policy. Um, so the local plan provision, you're right, there is a later provision that needs a further assessment, but there is a provision for one pitch in the local plan of which um, Beatley is a location, but it's on the existing site. What we're saying to you members is this, as this fits the criteria and the MPPF is supportive of the provision of uh, Gypsy and Traveller pitches, and this is the one pitch that's outlined in the local plan, plus you'd have your respective one, re retrospective one, apologies, so that's actually two pitches and it fits the criteria and the provision we're saying that it is acceptable in that instance, but members, it is within your remit to say that that is over the provision and not in accordance with how eight and take a different view in that regard. Um, was that everything answered or? Oh, something about ownership. Was that the other question? Yeah, are, are, the, are the applicants own, owners of the, um, of the garden centre and is it being run as a business? now today and are they being on site obviously to run the business the applicants have advised that they are running it as a business um there today um we've got um no evidence to the contrary to say that it's that it's not um and we've so we, we've assessed it on the basis that the business is, is operating um and and is continue to do so and they have they have said that in their assessment as well that they continue they will continue to to have both the residential and the business use element on site at the same time mr cardis thank you chairman yes this is an existing use which has obviously been recorded by the council um and it's one family um despite there being two pitches it's one family um so and they own the site thank you and although it's not fully relevant, is the um, is the garden centre operational? I have nothing to tell you to say this isn't operational. It has an existing use. I visited the site. I've seen items for sale, and as far as I'm aware, it is operational. They are selling goods. Okay, that's fine. I, it's not really necessary, but I just I was curious more than anything. I've got Councillor Kybird, and then we'll go back to Councillor Bowes. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, there's a proposed non-standard occupancy restriction, which um, ties occupation to um, current or previous employment in the um, in, in the adjacent business. Um, so uh, that probably does that affect whether we grant permission or does that only affect subsequent occupation? So it's it's not a personal permission. It's that the uses are tied together so that you would need to be in employment or last employment in the garden centre to occupy those pitches. So it doesn't have to be that family. Another family could operate both in operation. I think with regards to the garden centre members, I'd remind you they're not applying for planning permission for the garden centre. The garden centre is there. Um, as we've heard, it does have limited use. That doesn't prevent them from starting up that use as a garden centre or using it more intensively. I think your assessment is, is whether this is an appropriate location. We're not saying that the garden centre being there is overriding. We're saying it is a material consideration in the determination of this application, but it is the proximity to, to the location of Beatley and the limited impact that we feel and the ability for Beatley to serve this specific family's needs with regards to schooling that we feel it's appropriate in this location. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Bowes. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, just for um, out of interest and for clarity, um, can the agent um, confirm what exactly what sort of businesses it is? Because um, um, on Googling, it, it says that, they, that it's a paving and fencing business. Yep, I've visited the site. Um, I know they do paving and fencing. Um, I've seen a few items for sale outside on the occasion I've visited. Um, in terms of making a judgment on the use, in my opinion, from visiting the site and, and obviously the use classification that is formally accepted by the council, I feel that we have a garden centre use that can't be disputed. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Kittle Morris. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I've just uh, referred to what uh, Councillor Boyce uh, stated that the Brick Beatley didn't have any um, facilities for them to be to access from, from this particular site. Um, I'm looking at uh, paragraph 2.5 on item three in that. Uh, the site is a sustainable location in reasonable proximity to relevant services and facilities, including but not limited to transport. Do officers think that? reasonable access to transport um, is enough to uh, overcome the fact there are no facilities in in Big League that um, occupants of this site can enjoy. Uh, Nicola? Oh, no. So is it in referring to the services that are in the in the village itself, or in terms of the in terms of what's there, or is it is it the transport element? Um, I mean, obviously, for, from a um, from a local plan perspective, um, it is considered to be a sustainable village, and therefore that's why it has the settlement boundary. Um, so um, we have we have to we have to accept that that's what the local plan says. So we, we could get into the nitty gritty about exactly. Um, what facilities are there, or the, the, the exact bus services that, that do or don't run from there? But we're going we're going on the fact that the local plan has assessed it as a sustainable village with with facilities there to provide for additional housing. Back chairman, please. Please do. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about you know if, what you need if you if you if you talk about facilities, you need to go to a shop, a convenience store, or whatever. There are none available. You can get a very good uh, Thai takeaway from from uh, the new inn on, on on the street, but you can't get very much else, except you can get your hair cut and you can take your children to school. So I don't think you you is is what I'm trying to say is is the provision of reasonable transport a factor which we can take into account to say that this is a sustainable location for people to get to Deerham and other places to do the things that you can't do in Beatley. Thank you. So just going back to policy, how 08 it specifically says that one of the criteria and these are and criteria, not all criteria, that the site is a sustainable location in reasonable, reasonable proximity to relevant services and facilities included, but not limited to transport, education, health care, health care and other community infrastructure provision. Now, we understand there's limited provision there, you know, specifically, and the agent can clarify, but the family want to use the school specifically for their children. And that is why that location works specifically for that family. And we've had due regard that in the process. Like Nicholas set out, how 04 is a sustainable settlement as set out in your local plan in the hierarchy of settlements. But, you know, is there a doctor's surgery in Beatley? No, there isn't a doctor's surgery in Beatley. Is there ability to access that? Yes, we're saying there is a bus route. They're only at 130 metres from, you know, walking distance from the village settlement boundary. So they are in walking distance with proximity to access those services in the same way as any other resident in Beatley. But members, it is completely within your remit to take an alternative view to that and say, there isn't sufficient services in Beatley to serve this family. And, you know, this is an appropriate application in that regard. OK, thank you very much. No further questions. OK, thank you very much. I'm sorry, you, you twitched. <laughs> um, OK, here we go. Um, so uh, item 211A, which is 3PL 2021-1524F, 
at Beatley. Um, your officer's recommendation is one of approval. Can I have a show of hands, please? Nine. And those against? One. One. Okay. And Harry's out of it on this one. Okay. Nine. One. Okay. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Thank you very much. This item is approved. Um, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna have um, a break. It's five two. Might as well just have a quick ten minutes, and then we'll come back. All right. Um, we're just gonna have a quick uh, break, uh, cup of tea, and what have you, and um, we will start again just after five past. If you thank you.